I have a little confession to make. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. So yeah, I have a little confession to make. Basically, I've been into the aquarium hobby for, I would say 25 years now. Uh, yesterday was my birthday, I just turned 31. Yay! Yay! But yeah, I asked my parents when I had my first aquarium and they told me I was like five or six. So I've been in the hobby for 25 years. I never really tested my water parameters. So yeah, there it is, out with it. I'm not proud of it, but it is the way it is. So there's a few reasons why I've actually never done a proper water test. And I think the biggest reason is, is me, myself. I just don't like to overcomplicate things. I like to keep things very simple. Another reason is I think the tap water here in the Netherlands is actually quite good. You don't think we have a lot of toxic elements in the tap water here. I always like to have very good filtration on my aquarium. So anything that is toxic will usually be handled by the filter. And I always make sure that my, my tanks are always cycled for at least a few weeks before I add any livestock. And I also never really had any major issues with, with diseases in my aquariums. So I think those are like the main reasons why I never really tested my, yeah, my water. But ever since I started to get an audience here on social media, I get asked quite often like, Hey Mark, what are your parameters? What is your GH like? What is your pH like? And I usually just tell people like, sorry, I don't know, I just don't really measure them. Or I would give them like a fake number like, ah, my, my pH is somewhere between 7 and 7.5 and or my GH is somewhere between 9 and 10, something like that. But today, that's going to change, we're going to get the truth out there, we're going to do a proper water test. So I was very lucky and I just received this amazing test kit from my friend Dominic who is working at Sierra. So today's video is actually sponsored by Seda and Dominic if you're watching, thanks a lot, I really appreciate it. If you're not familiar with Seda just yet, you've probably been living under a rock. Nah, no, just kidding, but I'll leave the link to, to Seda to the Seda website, I'll leave it in the description box below. Definitely check that out. So with this test kit from Seda, we should be able to test the pH, the KH, the GH, the chlorine, the iron, the nitrites, nitrates, ammonia and phosphates. Alright, so let's just open this test kit up. Let's see what there is inside and then, yeah, we'll just go from there. Wow. Okay, this is proper chemistry right here. Definitely feel like a beginner when it comes to this stuff. But let's just see what there is inside. We have a manual, I'm gonna need that for sure. Um, we have here a color chart for the iron test, the pH test. Uh, the nitrite test and the ammonia test. So this I kind of, you know, this I kind of know how this works. I mean, we have these little vials here. So here you add in some of your water, then you add some of this, uh, some drops of that reagent, and then you should change color, and then you should come up with a number that's matching with the, um, yeah, the thing that you're testing for. So that I kind of know, but there's so much more than that in here. For example, this, this is, powder but it's an iron test so we have iron test in powder form and then here i also have a liquid iron test so I, yeah that makes no sense to me i have no idea which one i should use so yeah i guess that will be in the manual and this what is this sierra po4 test so this is phosphate but then this is also phosphate so again we have two different types of test regions Okay, um, we also have a syringe to, I guess, to take some water. And this is purified cleaning solution. Okay, so I guess with this we have to clean the syringe, the vials. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna read the manual, get myself familiarized with all this, and then we're gonna start doing some tests. Ah, you see, so I'm really new to this. So after reading the manual, I figured out, I found out that uh, I thought that, you know, there's here there's two bottles of phosphate. So I thought that these two bottles are actually just the same. Same with the uh, nitrite. So there's two bottles of nitrite here. And there's also two bottles of nitrate. I thought that those were just, you know, extra. Like you have one bottle and then if one bottle finishes, you have another bottle. But it actually is one test. So the powder is a reagent. Um, then you have reagent one here. 
region 2 and this is region 3 so you actually need three components to just do one test so now I figured it out uh, and it's the same with the iron test so this is component number one of the iron test and then this is component number two so we need both components to do one test so now it's all kind of starting to make sense okay guys so I think it's time for me to just get to work and start doing some whole bunch of tests here uh, I want to do a few different tests as well I'll test my, my tap water you know just see what the, what the basic values are there and I'll test a few scapes as well so I think I want to test the Iwagumi and see how the uh, the limestone is, is affecting the water parameters. I think I also want to test the low-tech beta tank because that one has a fresh layer of aqua soil. I want to see if that makes any changes to the to the parameters. And yeah, then we have three tests and then we can compare them all and I'll come back to you guys with the results. I mean, I think this is correct, but so bloody hard to see properly you know you see the color but then yeah i think it's 7.5 but yeah could easily be 8 i mean i don't know is this how it's supposed to work what do you guys think Alright, the results are in. Pretty shocking. Nah, it's not shocking at all. But yeah, I finished with the uh, tap water test. Took quite a while actually, but um, I enjoyed it. It was it was fun to do this. Um, instructions were, were clear as well, so for first time doing this test, I'm very pleased. Um, but the results, actually very straightforward. pH 7.5, GH is 10, the KH is 8. And everything else is zero. So like I suspect that the tap water here is just very clean, you know, it's very good. It's a little bit on the hard side because the, the KH and the GH are quite high. pH is also 7.5. So the tap water is a bit hard, but it's clean. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm gonna take a little break and then we'll start testing some water from my actual aquascapes. I think those results will be a little bit more interesting as well. All right, the results are in. So that was definitely a fun experience. I uh, actually learned a lot of new things today. But let's talk about the results. I'll actually put all the results up on the screen for you guys. So for me, the most important things were the pH, KH and GH. Um, I want to know what comes out of the tap here. And I want to know how that affected the aquarium water actually, if it would be a big difference. But the actual, there were not really any big differences. I do have to say that measuring the pH was actually the hardest thing to do because it, uh, the color chart and the, the color of the vial is just it's very difficult to, to see it accurately, you know? So according to the, to the test, my tap water should be pH 7.5. But then, yeah, pH 7 is, the colors are so similar and pH 8 is also very similar, so it's like, it's hard to, to get an accurate number, you know? And for my tap water, that could be just fine. I would, I would believe that I would be PA 7.5. But then the Iwagumi, I am injecting CO2. So basically the PA should be a lot lower there. But then again, it's not. So that has me confused a little bit. And the GH and the KH from the tap were a little bit higher than the actual aquarium water, which I think makes sense. I guess the, the aquasol does soften the water a little bit and something else that actually really surprised me was the uh, nitrates 
nitrates in my aquariums, so in both, both the aquariums, both the Iwagumi and the low-tech beta tank. I am dosing liquid fertilizer, not a whole lot, but I am dosing still. But in both tests I did not get any reading for nitrates. So I do know that I'm dosing very lean, so I guess all the plants have used all the available nitrate. I guess there's still some nitrate available in the substrate. So that was strange to me. Uh, same with the phosphate. Phosphate levels are also very low, which makes sense with the um, lean fertilization routine. And then iron. Yeah, well, iron was also barely, barely visible. In the Iwagumi, I did get some sort of a discoloration. So I think, yeah, in the Iwagumi, I measured 0.1 um, iron. And actually, in the Iwagumi, the first time I measured the phosphate, I got a really high reading, two milligrams, which, yeah, to me didn't make sense at all. So I, I did the test for a second time, and then it was completely, the water was completely pale. So it means zero, zero phosphates. So yeah, overall, I found out a lot of yeah, interesting information today. Nothing really shocking, but I guess that makes sense. I think I think you would only do these tests if if something would be off. You know, I mean, if if your plants are healthy and your fish are healthy, yeah, and you don't have any algae, then why would you do these tests? You know, because there probably not much would come up anyway. So I think that's also the reason why I haven't really been testing my water in all those years because I did not really have a lot of issues in my aquariums. I mean, of course I did have algae issues, but I was just too lazy to, <laughs> to test anything and find out what it is. So even though I did a bunch of tests today, um, of course there are still a lot of other things that we could have tested. Um, but those tests are just not included in this test kit. How many times have I said test already? Um, I would have been curious about potassium as well. Potassium, um, copper, not sure if there's copper in our tap water, but I would be curious about that as well. So maybe we have to test that in the future. Um, CO2, yeah, we test CO2 with the, with the drop checkers. And magnesium, magnesium is also not included. So yeah, there's still a bunch more things that we can always test. But uh, right now we have, we have the basics, the most important things here. So guys, let me know what you think of these test results. And also let me know how often you guys test your water parameters. I'll be curious to, to hear that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.